Hi guys, welcome back to the podcast, Digging Deeper with Erica and Mandy. Uh, we're glad that you joined us. Um, if this is your first time watching or listening to our podcast, I uh, just want to... Say thank you, first of yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks for giving us a chance. <laughs> yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, I kind of want to give you an overview of what we do here. Yeah. Uh, the name, Digging Deeper, so we like to dig deeper into the Bible mm -hmm. and bring, you know, what what God's saying to life, basically. Yeah. Yeah, we like to, we understand that the Bible is God's speaking to us, revealing his character to us. So it's really important for us to dig deep, to try and understand what is the true interpretation of scripture and how it applies to our lives. Yeah. That's what we like to do here. We, we really like to bring <laughs> forth the taboo things, like the things that the world does not like to talk about. Oh, man. Yeah. But you can't skip this stuff. If you no. really, truly want to understand God's Word, listen, that's what God's Word does to people. It transforms them. Yeah. When you learn the truths of the Bible, the Bible says it's like a sword. It comes in and it cuts you. It hurts. And everyone will experience that because we all need to be born again. And, you know, so mm -hmm. that's what we do here. We all just, like, you know, <laughs> stick the sword out. <laughs> Get you with that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're in First Peter chapter three chapter right? three yep last mm -hmm. time we did verses one and two yeah so we were gonna do three and four today because uh, did you guys like sandy and aaron oh <laughs> yeah that was the podcast from last week check that out that it was just a short five minute clip yeah yeah check it out if you haven't seen it <laughs> yeah so we were we we're supposed to do three and four but i think we're only gonna have enough time for three because we was gonna do them together but then we're like man there's just so much here oh my goodness we can't do one and then like Rush go real through. fast the other yeah, one yeah that would just defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do here which is yeah. to really focus on the material and make sure it's thoroughly covered um, so we decided to not try and rush through these verses mm -hmm. and just kind of hang out in verse three and see <laughs> see what happens and where we go <laughs> And I just tell you now, not everybody's going to like this one. But this is the Word of God, and this is what we do. This is it. I mean, I don't know how else to say it, but I just hope that you guys take something away from this, and you learn more and you grow more in Christ, just as we are as we're yes. studying this. Yeah, yeah. So that's always my prayer is that as I'm studying and learning and preparing for the podcast, that w it would first transform my heart, that I would learn to be obedient to it. Mm -hmm. And then once I get that, then I can share it with other people. Right. That's that's the prayer always for this. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, some of the topics aren't very fun today, um, but please understand we're not trying to attack anyone. We're not trying to hurt anybody's feelings or anything like that. We're we simply just want to know what God has to say to us mm -hmm. and if it hurts I would say let it hurt um let it change you um because sometimes when you're being transformed it's not always the most comfortable process mm. no no and the Bible never says that we're to be happy and mm. uh yeah com uh good where we're at yeah we're, we're called to, to more yeah and to be not comfortable he calls us yeah. out of being comfortable mm -hmm. so i mean this very this isn't comfortable at all talking about this kind of stuff no it's not but we're gonna do it because yeah. it's important yeah it's what it's what god called us to do so we're gonna do god's will because yeah. it's not about us that's right okay enough about that so let's just jump right into it i'll read it real fast uh First Peter chapter three verse three. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of the hair and the putting on of gold jewelry, or the clothing you wear. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so let me just recap real quick. In verse, or I'm sorry, chapter three, uh, he's speaking to wives. Um, so we're, he's he's talking specifically to women here, um, wives especially that are in marriages where she might be saved and her husband is unsaved or disobedient to the word um, and then part of his address to those wives is what Mandy just read about their outward appearance mm -hmm. um, but this is applicable to 
all women because he's talking about and we'll get to this next week about the the inner character of women and what is precious to God Mm -hmm. what is beautiful about women um so I'll Although I think we'll talk about this next week, how how this could apply in that certain marriage situation. But for today, this is really this is general, and and we know it's general because Paul uh, talks about it as well, and it's mentioned throughout the New Testament to to women in general too. So we're gonna treat it today just as women, right? Yeah. In general, okay. And we have scripture that will support that too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Erica, when Paul is saying or. Paul, when Peter is saying this, does he literally mean uh, braiding your hair, putting on gold jewelry, um, <laughs> or the clothing that you wear? <laughs> is that literally what he means? Like, is he literal, literally, literal? Well, does he here? literally say, do not wear gold, do not braid your hair, mm-hmm. things like that? Um, no. <laughs> um, and here, you don't want to hear a funny story. Yeah, I do. I did a lot of studying for this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually read commentators who, who argued that he was saying women can't braid their hair. Women can't put on gold jewelry or some, some translations say clothing, fine clothing. Mine says dresses that women couldn't wear things like that, that Peter was prohibiting those things. And that is just not at all what he's doing. Um, I want to pay attention to how it's worded. In my translation, it says, um, well, let me just read it. Verse 3, your adornment must not be merely external, braiding the hair, wearing gold jewelry, or putting on dresses. And I love how it included the word merely because that's really the true sense of what he's saying is that don't be so consumed with your outward appearance. And listen to those words, braiding, wearing, putting on. Those are all action verbs, and that's how they are in the original language too. So he's not so much focusing on what it is that they're wearing and how they're doing their hair, but it's the action of doing that. And it's meant to give you the idea of like a woman getting ready to go in the morning. She's you know, doing her hair. She's curling her hair, straightening her hair. She's positioning her hair. Then she's putting on her makeup. Then she's trying on her clothes. Then she's putting on the joy. So you get the idea. It's this whole process because she's so focused on her outward appearance and she's really believes that that's what makes her beautiful. But anyway, that's what Peter's trying to convey that it's the task of doing all of that. Mm -hmm. Trying to be distinguished for how you look and what you're wearing and what that says to other people about your status, your wealth, um, your, your Christianity, things like that. That's what he's really prohibiting is that kind of stuff. And <laughs> I'm not <laughs> finished yet. <laughs> more. <laughs> um, the best way, because if you're still like, ah, I'm not sure if I can get along with that, the best way to check scripture is with scripture right okay and you should do this when when we're done with this podcast go home pull out your bible and believe it for yourself okay you should do that after church anyway so do it now after this podcast go through scripture and see if what what is he really trying to say and i'll help you out with that (laughs) but we know that in different parts of scripture in Genesis, some of the leading uh, matriarchal ladies that we know, Sarah, uh, Rebecca, one of the the things that they were given as gifts were gold bracelets. Mm -hmm. And it it was a good thing that they were wearing gold jewelry. We can look in the book of Psalms and see how the queens would be wearing gold jewelry. If you look at, uh, let me just jump here to Ezekiel 16, 12. We'll start in 11. This is God speaking to his people. He says, I adorned you with ornaments. I put bracelets on your hand, a necklace around your neck. I put a ring in your nostril, earrings in your ears, a beautiful crown on your head. Listen to those words, a beautiful crown on your head. You were adorned with gold and silver. Your dress was of fine linen, silk, embroidered cloth. Um, And then in verse 14, your fame went forth among the nations on account of your beauty. Um, For it was perfect because of my splendor, which I bestowed upon you, declares the Lord God. So here's God himself decking these women out with all this nice looking stuff. So Mm -hmm. um, the Bible can't 
say in one part of scripture that that stuff's good and praise it, but then over here Peter condemns it saying they can't be wearing that stuff or doing their hair or putting on fine clothes, then there would be a contradiction. So that's yeah. not what Peter's uh, saying here. It's, it's the action. Yeah. It, it comes all down to the heart. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, but there's a mm-hmm. balance. I noticed on your notes, there's <laughs> one big word at the top of your notes that said balance. balance. So what So does that whenever mean? I was studying for this, this week, I, God, like, didn't give me anything. The only word that he gave me was balance mm-hmm. for this whole study. And I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> Erica's going to be so mad at me because I'm not prepared. <laughs> but that was the only thing that I got while I was trying to study for this was balance. Mm-hmm. And here's what that means. It, it doesn't physically mean like a balancing act <laughs> that you're beautiful because you can balance yourself. It's there's a balance in your beauty. Mm-hmm. You know, we... We can't be too modest Mm -hmm. to where we only wear uh, floor-length dresses and skirts and cover our heads or completely covered, you know. You can't do that or you can't go out, you know, saying like, man, I look better than that person. I buy all my clothes from Michael Kors. and on Fifth Avenue. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, has to have the name brand yeah things have to have the nicest of the nice stuff um has to be the most expensive thing Mm. can i add something real quick to that from scripture yep um in isaiah 3 listen to verses 18 through mm, 23 all right in that day and this is a, a a punishment on judah from the lord um and he's speaking to the women that's what he says in that day the lord will take away Count. Can you count these when I say them? Because I've never done it. I've been wanting to. Okay. The Lord will take away the beauty of their anklets, headbands, crescent ornaments, dangling earrings, bracelets, veils, headdresses, ankle chains, sashes, perfume boxes, amulets, finger rings, nose rings, festal robes, (laughs) outer tunics, cloaks, money purses, hand mirrors, undergarments, turbans, and veils. How many was that? 21. 21. Okay, so you can get the idea of what the women look back at, look like back in this day. They were decked out. Okay, everything that they could gather, they did. And there was no, there's nothing wrong with having all that stuff. Even, <laughs> even the Bible said the beauty of it. It was okay, but these women were just over the top. Yes. Everything had to be, like you said, name brand of that time. I don't know who was the name brand well, maker of the jewelry, but... Well, that's where the gold comes in place Mm -hmm. in the braiding of the hair because back in that day, Mm -hmm. you know, that's all that they had. They didn't have name brand stuff. Mm -hmm. They only had, like, the real stuff. They would do their hair up real high, and they would actually put gold plates in their hair. They would, like, put all this stuff in this hair, and it would – it's just a way to get the attention on themselves. Yeah. To broadcast their wealth and their status. That's what they were doing. Um, And – and it's not necessarily the items, it's the, it's the number of items and the heart that desires them is what he's saying. And I was thinking about today, like, well, you know, <laughs> what do we have? And I made this little list when I just started thinking about it. Mm. You can see, maybe I'll hold it up. I'm, I probably won't read all of them, but can you see my notebook with just the list I made <laughs> of everything that we women today <laughs> have to have everything from earrings and every part of our ear (laughs) nose rings belly button rings finger rings uh toe rings bracelets anklets uh glasses some people have to glasses yeah (laughs) some people don't need glasses but they wear them because it's an accessory Mm -hmm. okay belts purses um phone cases listen they even get uh gold-plated teeth, oh, silver-plated yeah. teeth, diamonds in their teeth. Oh, yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. I- eyebrow rings, mm-hmm. that's still a thing. Okay, sometimes we dye our hair, we have headbands, uh, sparkly clips we put in our hair. Uh, I mean, our keychains. 
our sometimes you have to have the phone holder on the back of the phone case mm, yeah and that has to look a certain way and be sparkly and blingy sometimes women buy cars and they treat them as an accessory that makes them look good mm -hmm. shoes okay <laughs> purses did i say purses i don't know purses wallets book bags i mean uh, it just goes on and on and on but here's you know the thing i catch myself doing that a lot and it's the keeping up with the joneses thing oh right yeah. so you always want to do better than the joneses which you know the phrase came from their neighbor you're trying to outdo your neighbor mm -hmm. um so i catch myself doing that and wanting yeah. things yeah but you know i don't get them because it's yeah. not god's will because that's out of order Yes. Wanting it because somebody else has it and you want to either people please or be better than somebody else. So the underlining condition or issue with that is... Is your heart. Yeah. And it's usually like jealousy or... Envy or... Um, man, you want that perfect social media picture. That perfect Instagram picture. You know, and you need to have your face done upright, your teeth done upright, your hair done upright, you gotta be wearing the right jacket that's in style, you know, the the, the sleeves have to be rolled up to the right length on your jacket, you know. And it's, it's gotta be in season, in style, you can't have something that was last season. Yeah, it's, it's that, yeah. it's that heart, it's that woman who seeks to distinguish herself by her outward appearance. And you can do that in person, you can do it through social media, you can, build up a huge following of people who like your pictures just because of the way they look listen i wrote this down yesterday um because i was trying to look up beauty on the internet what the world thought beauty was mm, that's interesting but it's it's you know what we're going to be talking about next week true beauty yeah because mm -hmm. they still want the sense of a true beauty um and it's really funny because you know satan's in the world mm -hmm. and of the world yeah and you, but they still long for that but um the enemy distracts us and gives us a false definition of beauty social media with the influencers yeah my goodness Oh, I can't stand the influencers. They are literally influencing you. Yes. The, that's their word. That's their, They're telling you what's good and what's not. And none of it is good. They're half naked half the time. They're perfectly... They got filters. Mm. Nobody is perfect like that. No. But they're influencing our young generation. Yeah. The generation coming up after us is influenced by these people that pers have a persona of being fake right it's all fake it's all fake none of it is true but our young generation is following that mm -hmm. uh it's so sad and then whenever you you talk about social media i think of the word media what do you think of whenever you hear media um production i think of fake news okay yeah because a staged play. <laughs> if if you listen to any kind of media, um, social media, news, mm -hmm. they're trying to tell you what is good, mm -hmm. what is bad, mm -hmm. you know. That you're missing something, that yeah. you, you need something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's all wrong. Man, First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 is what women really need. I, we're not going to talk about it this week or the next week, but he says... You know, he, Peter gives us women from the Bible to look at, look towards as models. Like, that's your inspiration. Yes. And we need that desperately now more than ever for our young women in society. Oh, <laughs> such a need. Oh, my goodness. Yes, because, like, I, I keep on coming back to those influencers, and it's like, you've got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. And, like, TikTok and all these dances oh and crap goodness. like that. Oh it's, like, it's like, it's like. The, the number of likes you get is the determination of your character. Right? Is your that, worth. Yeah. Yeah. That's so not true. And we cannot get wrapped up in that, women. We can't do that. No. That's it, Okay, so here's the flip side to that. Okay. okay. The balance is that 
that doesn't mean we have to stroll in the Walmart in pajamas, okay? Because we can't do that either, ladies. We cannot be scrounge balls. We can't say things like, I, I'll dress however I want. I'm not, you know, I'm not like the influencers. I, and I don't care. I'll wear this. I don't care what people think of me. Okay, that's the opposite side of the spectrum, and we can't go there <laughs> either. We got to kind of stay in this middle there, A balance. Area. That's the balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because let's go to Proverbs 31. Ah. Everyone knows my favorite, <laughs> the Proverbs 31 woman. Okay, you know who she is? You said last time she's fake. She's not real. Right. That's true. This lady doesn't exist. You know what she is? She's a mirror. Mm. She's the mirror of scripture for women, okay? She is ideal, and she is the godly woman and none of us are gonna be perfect like she is it's impossible but she's she's our model our role model that we go to and uh i love how it says in verses in verse 21 she for all of her household are clothed with scarlet she makes covering for herself her clothing is fine linen and purple she's not wearing her pajamas everywhere okay she does actually care about her appearance. Mm-hmm. She's not self-absorbed in her appearance, but she does care about how she looks and how she presents herself to her family, her husband, and her society, and uh, the general public. She ca- You know why? Because she's a Christian, and we're all Christians. We're all like her. We are all daughters of the King, okay? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God of Gods, the One in Control, the Alpha, the Omega, the Savior, he is our king and we are his daughters that is a high position and we ought to we ought to dress for that we ought to respect that position and care about what we look like we ought to reflect that to society again we're not self-absorbed in how we look spending all of our money time and energy into our outward appearance but we do take a little bit of pride in our appearance because it reflects jesus christ yes Yes, that's the whole thing. It reflects Jesus. That's right. Everything that we do as Christians reflects Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think we forget that Mm -hmm. all the time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right? Mm -hmm. I know I do. Because, I mean, I don't go as far as wearing my pajamas in the Walmart, but, like, I don't always look the best. I, I mean, I don't either. There's days where I put on... I mean, I work for the family business, and Mm -hmm. it's an office of one. I'm by by myself, so sometimes I just roll in the front door, which is like the same property as the house, so it's really not, you know, like I'm going to work every day, so maybe I'll just wear sweatpants today, Mm -hmm. but still, even then, I can't stand when I do that, Mm because I'm reminded of this, like I need to take pride in my appearance, what if like in walks, I don't know, someone who I would think was important, I don't know, (laughs) but if I had to run the town or whatever, I ought to take pride in how I look. Mm-hmm. Put in a little bit more effort. Yeah. Okay. And I cannot hear this thing where, uh, oh, I can't afford clothes like that. You know? Dude, the dollar store has some really nice clothes. Where did we go the other day? Me and you. We went to... Goodwill. Goodwill. <laughs> we went to Goodwill. Erica was buying stuff up. Listen... She was like, let's, we had to do something else, make a little errand, a little trip, and then she's like, let's stop this Goodwill, and I was like, all right, so we walk in, and I'm a little hesitant at first, because admittedly, I don't typically go to the Goodwill, but I was like, I, you know, I need some pants, I'll look around. I'm wearing the pants <laughs> right now that I <laughs> bought at Goodwill. I love them, they're $5. Boom. Listen, I found a pair of Hollister jeans, mint condition, looked brand new, they were originally $65. I looked them up online. Mm-hmm. Five bucks. Dude, listen. And then if you go on Goodwill, they have weeks where there's a certain color that's half off. So if you buy that color really? tag, it's half off. Yeah. <laughs> or the Salvation Army. Salvation Army is the best place to go yeah. because it's cheaper and it's for a good, a good cause. They don't try to get rich off of people's donations like goodwill does like Mm -hmm. goodwill i think is expensive but their ceo is a millionaire Mm. and salvation army isn't doing that they're trying to create an army to save people yeah that's awesome so and then you're supporting them too yeah it's a it's a win-win but anyway there's really no excuses if you truly want to be obedient to scripture and dress for god he will provide an opportunity for you to 
purchase the clothes that you need to purchase and he will he will support you in that this Listen, is a good thing god will provide yes. every single thing that you need yeah but it's up to you how you use that mm-hmm. wisely mm-hmm. because listen here i don't know if i'm allowed to say this but i'm going to say it anyway okay. so my mother-in-law whenever she was first a baby christian she went to church and it was just her at the time she was the first one to get saved in her family i believe so she was going to church and uh you know they they had no money so she always shops at thrift shops like the salvation army and all that and has all these really nice expensive clothes so the church was like giving out these donations or doing something for people in need and she's like hey you know i i need that Mm -hmm. and they're like well we overlooked you because you look so nice all the time that you know we thought you had money well she didn't Uh uh-huh so she was overlooked because she had thrift store clothes. She was able to use what she could. Yeah. And make herself look nice and neat and orderly and presentable. Yeah. So she had no money, but God provided her with mm. the clothes from the thrift store, from the garbage dump she got stuff too for her house. Yeah. So like you have to be wise in what you use and what you spend your money on. Yes. Yep. Sorry. No, that was Go a good ahead. point. Yeah, so that's, um, now you you mentioned this a little bit earlier, we can go back, but there's another, there's a couple of scriptures in the New Testament. We're going to hang out on this, this topic pretty much the whole podcast, right? Yeah. Okay. There's a couple different scriptures in the New Testament that talk about uh, the clothing that women wear. Um, another one is 1 Timothy 2.9. I know that you wrote this one down too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says, likewise, this is Paul speaking to Timothy. I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments, but rather by means of good works as is proper for women making a claim to godliness. How much more important is it for us women when we make a claim to godliness, like we name the name of Jesus, that our appearance be in order, Hmm. properly clothed. It's important, this topic of what we wear and how we present ourselves. Okay, so yeah. let's be honest. We say this all the time that a lot of this stuff has, that has nothing to do with culture, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of scripture. Yeah. <laughs> this is, when you read through scripture, the clothing and the dress is one of those things that takes its cues from culture. Mm-hmm. And it has to. Mm-hmm. Okay, because way back in the Old Testament, the men wear, would wear the dresses, okay? And, that, and that, in that culture, that was the manly thing to do. It's not the manly thing today. I mean, like in Scotland, you can do that, but okay. not here. And that's a great example. In Scotland, the culture is a little different. Yeah. So, you know, if the men are wearing skirts over there, that means something that is manly. That's what the men do. Yep. Now, if men in America right now wear skirts and dresses... It's not manly. They're specifically saying I'm not manly. So yes, our dress, um, our jewelry, our clothing does take its cues from the culture. For example, we women wear pants. Mm -hmm. Okay, 100, 200 years ago here in America, you you couldn't do that. No. But we can do that now. Um, And you said that, you know, it's women don't have to always wear floor length dresses all the time. Well, that's, that's true. You know, we don't always have to wear long dresses and have hats on. We don't need to be covered, okay? We don't need to cover our hair and half our face and completely cover the rest of our body. Mm -hmm. That's not what our culture is today. That's not what you would call, like, a a nicely dressed female. Mm -hmm. So you do kind of have to get your clues from the culture of what is is feminine to wear, what looks nice, and kind of go with that. You know, if you listen to this podcast 100 years from now, it's going to be different maybe, probably. Oh, definitely. Okay. In Timothy, when he says for the woman to dress modestly and discreetly, you ready for this truth bomb? Bring it on. That word modestly (laughs) um, has origins in the term shamefacedness, shame and guilt. And the idea, he's talking about women in the church, if we're going to get technical, how women dress in church. And it's the idea of she would feel so much shame if the way she dressed distracted people's attention from the focus being on God and his word. 
Hmm. She would feel shame if what she was wearing was a temptation to men. She would feel shame if she was in any way contributing to the seduction of men in the church, especially the married men who were there with their wives. If she was dressing in such a way that she would be causing them to have impure thoughts about her or females. Man, listen to this. I went, my brother got married this weekend. Yeah. And uh, Joby's friends from his work got invited. I don't know how they got invited, but they were there. <laughs> so, you know, I was out dancing, get my groove thing on. Okay. Modestly. Okay. Because, you know, I'm representing Jesus <laughs> and my right. kids were there. So, like, yeah. I couldn't, you know. So, anyway. So, Joby and this dude was talking, and there's some chick there that had a romper on. Okay. And, my goodness, I think her butt cheeks were hanging out. Mm. And this dude looks at Joby and says, is it wrong to stare? Uh Uh-huh. And Joby said, yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah, don't stare. (laughs) So, like, that is a great example of getting your uh letting people see you dressing in such a way to attract men yes like that's literally where your heart is it's just i've heard this term growing up from a lot of people flaunt it while you got it right doesn't matter what society says doesn't matter what the church says while you have a nice body show it off that's what our young women are taught that's so wrong and that is the opposite of biblical truth. The truth is to dress modestly. You, like, like the word says, you have shame at the, f- at the fact that you would be caught. You would be the reason that a man would have impure thoughts. You're causing that man to stumble. You're the stumbling block. And what does the gospel say about uh, being a stumbling block? block? It's better to tie concrete footers to your feet and drop yourself in the in the ocean sink your it's better be dead yeah <laughs> than to be a stumbling block to others right mm-hmm. so it's okay to feel uncomfortable i always feel uncomfortable at parties like weddings like you said because there's women that wear things like that and then here i am <laughs> dressed modestly so i feel like an old old woman you know yeah well i had pants and a shirt a nice shirt on and i asked my husband i'm like you know is this to dress down for a wedding and he's like yeah it looks fine and but like i didn't want to wear a dress because i didn't want to because i knew i was going to be dancing which wasn't much of anything but like i didn't want to cause a scene or have somebody be looking at me like the dress accidentally coming up or something yeah. which if you know me I'm not really a dress person to begin with for that reason there because I don't want to accidentally like it be sticking in my underwear or something yeah you know what I mean yeah <laughs> yeah it just scares the crap out of me I had a friend who loved to wear dresses um, but she had the same thing. She was like, you know, I know the dresses are long enough they went down to her knees she's like I still feel uncomfortable like what if a gust of wind comes by you know yeah. and and so she actually went and bought these like like biker shorts the yeah. tight shorts and she always wore those little shorts underneath of all of her dresses yeah and i thought like wow that's such a good example of you caring more about your integrity than about the stares of other people yeah and like i I always feel uncomfortable like at the beach <laughs> <laughs> or at swimming pools because all of the women dress in these really oh skimpy goodness. bathing suits or Dude, bikinis. listen. And that's not modest. The thing at the beach this year was thong bikinis. No. And it was in such a way where it was so thin, it was still covering the crack, but it was basically a wide thong bikini. My son even noticed it, and he's seven years old. He's like, what are they doing? I'm like, just don't even look over there. Yeah. That, it's so what, sad. Yeah, don't even look. Yeah, and I can hear, like, a lot of people pushing back right now saying, I can wear what I want. Like, that's not my problem. That's the man's problem. He has issues. He shouldn't be looking. Listen, men are not perfect, okay? Yeah. Some of them are Christian brothers, and, you know, just like it would be very tempting if someone put this giant chocolate cake in front of me right now, 
I would have to eat it, <laughs> you know, even right? though that could cause me to sin and gluttony. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's not make it harder for men by being naked in front of them and prouncing around saying, I don't care, it's not my problem, it's their problem. I got it, I'm going to flaunt it. Okay, if you're a Christian, you should care more about them than yourself. Cover yourself up modestly. For all the married people, like, would you want your husband looking at that? Yeah, I wouldn't want, now my husband is a good man, mm-hmm. and your husband is too. And even then, I wouldn't want a woman in a thong bikini just prouncing herself around in front of him. Like, to me, I would be like, why would you tempt him like that? Uh Uh-huh. Anyway, so there's that. (laughs) And then there's also the opposite of that. But let's get back to the fact that we are representing jesus yes, christ yes with our bodies mm-hmm. with the way we present ourselves with how we act how we speak everything is a representation of jesus christ so if you're out there in a bikini because you have the body for it you're are you representing jesus by that like everything that we do we need to ask ourselves is this representing Jesus? Would Jesus be pleased? Would I be wearing this you if Jesus was here? You remember in the here? 90s whenever they had those wristbands, WWJD, what would yeah. Jesus do? Uh-huh. We need to bring that back. Oh, I love, I, I think about that all the time. What would Jesus yes. do? What would I do if Jesus was in this room? Right? Right? We surely wouldn't be acting or talking the same, even though he knows your heart better than you yeah. do. Mm-hmm. And he knows what's up. Mm-hmm. We would still put on this persona that we're a different person. Yep. But why can't we do that in everyday life instead of just on Sundays? Mm, Good point. But, I mean, me, you get what you see, so. (laughs) You know, know, I I wanted to make a comment when you were saying that. Sorry. uh, For the the women that do have these nicer bodies, you know. Yeah. um, (laughs) You wouldn't have that if it wasn't for God. Do we understand that? Hmm. Like, your, even your body, as nice as it is, <laughs> is a gift from God. And he can take that away at any second. It's still his possession, especially if you're a Christian. Your body is not your own, but it's God's. Mm-hmm. He has protected you and your body from severe disaster or tragic occurrences from the day you're born until now. And you should give him all the credit for the way you look anyway. So take a little bit of care in how you present that to the outside world as if you own your body, Hmm. as if it's yours. It's not yours. It's Hmm. God's. Okay? Okay. Okay. Here's the balance to that, though. That's the one side of the spectrum about (laughs) being, like, super feminine. Yeah. (laughs) Super masculine. Ah. Okay. (laughs) Ah. (laughs) Okay, we cannot be wearing men's clothing either (laughs) and shaving our heads and looking like men. And that's biblical. Let's go yes, over it here. Is. <laughs> Let's go over here to uh, 1 Corinthians 11. Um, I'll start in verse 4 and stick with me. I'll explain it when I'm done. Every man who has something on his head while praying or prophesying disgraces his head. But every woman who has her head uncovered while praying or prophesying disgraces her head, for she is one and the same as the woman whose head is shaved. For if a woman does not cover her head, let her also have her hair cut off. But if it is disgraceful, if it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved, let her cover her head. Okay, I'm just going to stop right there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop there. And I know a lot of people are saying, we have to cover our head when I'm praying. No. (laughs) Again, we take our dress cues from the culture. And that's exactly what they did here. And it was customary at that time for women to be proper to cover their head when praying. And that was just something that the women did. And then there were women in the Corinthian church because the Corinthian church was crazy and out, totally out of line uh, and out of order. No. That was this, and that's an important term. They were out of order. And the women were uncovering their head as if to say, I'm on the same level with the men. They don't have to wear the covering, neither do I, and I won't. And what does Paul say to them? If she's going to uncover her head, let her shave her hair off completely. Just let her be bald. Let her be a man. If she's going to act like a man, then let her just call herself a man. 
And yeah, because so, the men had short hair back in yes, the day. Yeah. And so the whole point was um, she is a woman and a godly woman acknowledges that. And in a way to show society that she is submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ, she will look like a woman. And that's what the word says. A woman who honors God is a woman who says, I will look like a woman. I will dress modestly, of course. I'll not show my figure off, but I will not look like a man. And I will make sure that the public knows I'm not a man. I don't want them to be confused. Concur? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. It's just, I still cannot get over the fact because, listen... I, I work for my dad. <laughs> okay. This is a good point. Yeah. And I split wood. All right. It is a man's job. <laughs> but I'm making money for my family. Um, so, like, see, this is where, where's the line I hear? And in order to split the wood, like, I got to wear jeans. And then I wear a flannel shirt to work because it's warm. And it's outside. <laughs> and now it's getting cold. And it's like... <laughs> Am I, do, am I wrong for dressing like that? Trying to work like that? Trying to provide for my family like that? Like, is it wrong? Okay, here's here's how you know. Okay. I'm looking at your condition now, and you're so fearful that you might be in sin or offending God that that is the cue that you're okay. Whew. It comes down to your heart and your motive. You don't look like a man right now. <laughs> See, listen. <laughs> I've been so sick and tired of looking like a dude that, like, I've been curling my hair. And on the way over, I'm like, I curled my hair on the day that we're talking about braiding your hair and not wearing gold jewelry, not bringing the eyes upon you. And look at me today. Today of all days. Okay. I, I always come back to this statement when I'm thinking about all this. A woman whose heart is right with God in this area, of course, uh, doesn't have a problem with this. Okay, she can wear the things that she has, she knows is okay, that God is pleased with, okay? And if you have to go to work looking like that, your heart's right before God. He knows that. You're not trying to be a man. You're not trying to convince the world that you're a man or can be a man. You have to wear that for work. That's it. Okay. You can still have nice earrings on. I mean, I do. <laughs> you can get a shirt made that says, I am a woman. <laughs> and like... I don't wear my regular wedding band because I don't want to break it. And plus, it's a little bit yeah. too big for me. I don't want to lose it right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. So, like, I have these on, and I know everybody's like, why do you have those <laughs> rings? Where's your good rings? Well, I don't want to lose them. Oh. I don't want to break them. This is such another good point I wanted to make is that uh, we, our dress and our outward appearance is between us and God, ultimately. Okay, you have to come to the word like we just did today, which we espoused to you, explained it all. So now you know, and now you go to God and say, I'm dressing for you. Okay, and let him convict you when you're not dressing appropriately. And then ultimately, it's between you and God after that. So then we can't judge each other. Okay, especially our sisters in Christ. If I look at you and I say, you wear glasses all the time, like really? Because her and I both are blind as a bat, right? Mm. She wears glasses every day. I wear contacts every day. If I say to you, you know, you you got to you gotta take your glasses off because you would look better if you had contacts in. Like Listen, me. I course. had a man tell me that before. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and he gave me money for them and everything. Oh, my goodness. Okay. But then the person that I am, I gave it back. Good. And continued wearing my glasses. Good. Because you are right before God and it would be judgmental of me to dictate what you should wear and should not wear. What's acceptable to society. Exactly, exactly. For example, a woman who has her heart right with God has tattoos. Who am I to say she, she's ugly with tattoos? No, she's not. Or a nose ring. So what? Who cares? Maybe it's beautiful. You know, maybe it is a shiny gold nose ring. But God hey. God gave them to him in the Old Testament. And he called them beautiful. You just, you yeah, just read it. I did, yeah. And that's right. Like who, just because I don't want to wear it, just because I wouldn't want to put a nose ring in my nose doesn't mean no other godly woman can either. I don't see any prohibitions in the Bible about nose rings. Do you? I don't see anything where it I, says that it's going to send you to hell. I don't see that. No. So we need to make sure that we are right with God first and not judge others. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, yeah. There's scripture that says um, about taking the plank out of your own mm-hmm. eye. Yeah. How's Be- it go? Yeah, take the plank out of your own eye before you can help your friend with the speck in his eye. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's not exactly how it's worded, but it's something like something that. Something like that. But, yeah, we we need to do look at ourselves first before we're looking at anybody else because there's a lot wrong with us. Yeah. It's hard enough day by day to keep ourselves living in righteousness. Mm. I mean, it's it's hard enough to just focus on ourselves. We can't be focusing on everyone else around us, too. Especially our husbands. But that's, we'll get into that later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's it, guys. <laughs> so, uh, all right. See you next week. <laughs> so ha- have fun unwrapping all that. <laughs> it's not yeah. fun. Yeah, it's but hard. It is hard. God never said being a Christian was going to be easy. No. If anything, it's probably the hardest thing that you'll ever do. And people that think that Christians have it all together and they have this perfect life, listen, no, they don't. That's that's so untrue. That's the enemy working against you to push you away from Christianity. Because it's hard. It's hard work, yeah. But the mm-hmm. reward is eternal life with Jesus Christ. Why would you want to mess that up? There's nothing better than that. No. I will take this hardship right now. I shouldn't even say that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, say it. You're gonna, are you going to say it? Say it. I, I will take this hardship right now to have the eternal life with Jesus. That's a bold statement. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now the enemy's gonna attack me hard, <laughs> hardcore. Uh, what's that scripture in Timothy? All who desire to uh, live righteously will be persecuted. Hmm. Yeah. Fun times. <laughs> All right. You want me to pray us so? out? Yeah. <laughs> Dear Lord, we come before you, Lord, asking for forgiveness, Lord, for taken the spectrum too far one way lord and not not the other not in the center lord where you desire it to be lord and just forgive us and just help show us what we need to do where we need to be how we need to be how we need to dress how we need to present ourselves lord make it known to us give us that desire lord lord forgive us for not doing it right for doing it in ourselves for making ourselves look good lord but we're representing you lord and let us not forget that lord we just thank you jesus for everything that you've done that you died on the cross for us so that we can do what we're doing lord that we come straight to you that we don't need, we don't need a meditator you are the meditator the mediator between us and god that we can go straight to him through you lord we just thank you that we can have that kind of relationship with you just bless your name lord the name above all names there is none like you there's no other god beside you you're the only god the only true god we just thank you and we praise you in jesus name we pray amen